Welcome to the world of Rod's Tabletop Hoops. Today is a fun day because it's a new package in my home. And I'm just going to say before I get into this unboxing video, I'm going to say thank you to all the people who are watching the channel. I have not just only gotten up to the 330 subscriber mark on YouTube. I also had a career best 3,700 people viewing my channel. And I've been doing this on the slow burn for about two or three years. And I've kind of picked up the pace with my videos a little bit this year. And obviously people are watching them and I really appreciate people coming to the channel and enjoying the uh, videos which range from old timey classic tabletop basketball games to more modern day games, unboxings, gameplays, reviews, all that fun stuff, just analysis of the hobby. That's what I like to do, and it's all a lot of fun. Thank you for joining, and thanks for subscribing, and thanks for watching. So anyway, back to our uh, subject at hand. We have ourselves a box here, and, and that's always the funnest thing. It's been the funnest thing I've ever done since I got app of baseball or fast break basketball as a young kid in the 1980s. Uh, this is a special unboxing here. I can't wait. I have physically used my original Boy Scout knife and did one slice here so I can open the box easily. But outside of that, uh, I have not seen the contents inside the box. And if you can read the label on the box, you know exactly what this prize is all about. Let's get into this thing and take a look. see what we got well it looks like we got some paper that looks like the uh, magic of the day big bunch of paper so what else do we got a receipt all right looks really good yep that's how much I paid all right get this thing out of here what do we have if you can read that it says replay basketball Might need to use the old trusty Boy Scout knife to get in there. Kind of a late birthday gift for myself. Turned 57 on Sunday, the 29th. Ugh, there we go. So what do we have here? Looks like we got replay. Get the glare off. And that is a cool looking box. That is really neat. And let's see what it looks like over here. Tells us to get into the game. Well, I guess we better get into the game. Replay basketball, get into the game, nothing on the back. So that's pretty darn cool. All right, readjusted a couple things. Had a little too much flash from the camera, so we turned that off. Hopefully you can still read it. I just was just getting too much flash from the glare on the box. So that's replay basketball in perfect condition, perfectly packaged. Got ourselves a little baggie here. And some things that look like dice. And maybe some cards. You know, once again, Boy Scouts. Wow, that thing is tight. Gotta be vicious. I believe that's all that's in the baggie. Got some bubble wrap I can pop for the next couple hours. And this is the the dice version. I'm not a big fan of just uh, no dice versions of games, so I decided to go for the smaller deck. It's just, I think, a 62 card, 62, 63 card pack of cards, and I will roll dice with it. The dice include a red, a white, and blue, which that'll be easy to read. I've watched a few videos on this. Got a little pawn to show who has the basketball and a few other markers I'm not too familiar with. Maybe a time clock marker and some other strategy markers. So that's as simple as that. Um, should I take a look inside this before I go into the instructions? Let me see what these cards look like. All right, that possessions to the center. And let's see what we got. Yep, they're two-sided cards. Point guard, coach's choice. 
So it's going to be something about, it's always flipping over, I think, is what they do in uh, replay basketball. So it'll be center, and then you can check after your roll, you can see who gets the rebound. I will have to learn these these cards a little bit, but yes, they're in really good shape. They're pretty good quality. And there are markers, of course, if you want to insert those all the time or just use a game clock. So hopefully there will be a game clock in here because I'm not a big fan of inserting those cards every single time you need to reset your deck. Well, what do we have here? More plastic. So they've obviously taken good care of the game parts. They're ready to rock and roll. Let's see what we got here. Here's replay basketball. Look at this. Um, got some LeBron James as a sample. Talks about where every single card goes. So there's a go-to rating, obviously, at the top. You got your grid. Each one of the grid columns of the grid talks about contested field goal shooting, open shots, Rebound shots, hot shooting, three-point shots, column three, block shots, column four, turnovers and steals, column five, assists, passing, column six, drawing fouls. So it's a unique uh, formula that Replay uses to get these uh, results, and hopefully they will be reasonably accurate when I get into a gameplay. Yeah, nice solid sheet right there. Also have the game rules. Basic game, advanced game, so advanced game includes fast breaks. I had a video not too long ago about fast breaks. Pump the lighting up one more time since I'm not showing the, the glary stuff. Let's see here. Oh wow, look at the look at the way that is done. It's actually in a little booklet format like you get you're trying to do some kind of project for college and turning in a, a term paper. And there are the instructions there. Very good quality. There's, there's a hardcover on the front and the back. So the game parts obviously so far look pretty darn good. You got offensive playing, offensive crash. Interesting. All kinds of new stuff to learn here with replay basketball. There's assists, three-point shooting, passing. I have watched a few videos, the Replay Gamer, a few other people, Steve Tower a little bit. He did one a long time ago, so hopefully once I get into this game, I can do a gameplay and explain it as we go. You also get a score sheet. I might just use my stuff uh, on my computer because I can print out results instantly, but uh, this is a decent-looking score sheet. Gives you a few of them, gives you a hard copy, a solid cardboard copy at the end. So that's a nice sheet. What else have we got? This is apparently a great reference chart for everything that's going on. I'm sure some of this will be, uh, come to memory once you get knowing all the, the significant six columns on a, on a card. Advanced rest chart. I'm not a big rest guy. Probably won't even worry about that, at least for the time being. But... Um, I've been told this is just a, a really good way of dissecting the game, the defensive matchups, the offensive matchups. They all work, work together, and uh, so there's some stuff to learn here as well. Nice laminated, shiny. That's why I'm holding it down a little bit. If I do that, then we get a lot of glare. Oh, this is the fast break chart. So the dreaded fast break chart. I'll see how smoothly I can run a fast break eventually. I've I've seen other players do it and they kind of struggle and it takes like a minute and a half just to run a fast break. A fast break should be fast. So I'm hoping for some uh, a good fast break. As you know, I like a good fast break in a video in a tabletop game. This is rebounds on free throws. That's always nice. Rebounds on block shots. Uh, jump balls. That looks that always looked at a little, little complex. I just say give the player a couple ratings and add one die to each. Why are we looking at all these numbers? But it is a lot of detail, and I respect that. We got a full court press. We got an injury duration table. So that'll be interesting to see how much injuries occur during this game. I've also heard. Oh, here's the game board. This is neat. 
Oh, it's nice and small. And as long as it's not too glary for me, I'll just have to have my light off probably when I play it. No, not too bad. Not too bad. Well, it depends on where the light's shining. But uh, this is kind of neat. It's got your, your match up right there. Very simple and small. And I will say one thing when I'm playing bank shot basketball, which has been kind of a uh, recent addition to my collection as well. I don't use the sheet too much because it's a little wavy and it shows a lot of glare. The cards themselves in bank shot are very glossy and so they they kind of give their own glare but i can i can dodge that but once you combine that with a board that's glossy and glary it makes it tough to film videos it has nothing to do with the quality of the board that i wouldn't want to use it normally but this is a nice looking board this is in fact one of the nicest looking little boards i've ever seen it's just nice and simple very very well done and of course you got the replay basketball rare play charts who puts together a whole booklet dedicated to rare plays that is quite impressive so we got our the dice roll we got 11 you know rare play card possession results roll all three dice red white and blue so you can you got 11 through what does that mean 999 plays or something or what is it <laughs> i'm very curious about this Oh, rare plays on rebounds. Rare plays on the fast break. So it's just situational. So I was just wondering what the, the deal was that. Rare plays on the press. Rare plays on a made free throw. Rare plays on a missed free throw. So that's pretty detailed. That's quite interesting. I can't wait to get into that to see some stuff. That is one of the few things that you, you know, some of the games I enjoy, they don't have a little random or rare play result that's extensively done. So this could be maybe one of the funnest thing that, things that occurs with replay. Maybe it only occurs once a game. Maybe it only occurs uh, once a half. Who knows? But uh, rare plays on a stall. I don't know if I'd even use that advanced feature, but still. There's intentional fouls within this as well. This kind of reminds me of like a sacrifice booklet or something you'd get in half a baseball. Final plays of a half. Team trailing by three points. So there are uh, emergency plays to go along with it. I'm just going to take a look. This is the play card recession. This is just this one might be used the most. This is the play card possession results. So that's that's interesting in itself. So um, wow, that's the fast break. So this will be interesting. We'll see how that plays out. This is quite the quite the booklet. And once again, the quality is really good. They spent a lot of extra on the glossiness for the spiral notebook here. So that's quite impressive. Okay, now we get to the one season that I purchased. As many folks know, I'm a huge American Basketball Association fan. So I had to um, take a look at the 1975-76 ABA season. It's the last year of the ABA. They finished the season with just seven teams but i've been told that the um replay version of the 75 76 season shows the nine teams that actually played during the 75 76 season the utah stars and the san diego sales formerly the conquistadors um they both bailed about 10 to 15, 16 games into the season. But apparently they've created cards for these guys. So let's find out. Am I right? I, have I been told the right information? That is the key. I've also been told these have been all pre-cut as well, which will be nice. I don't, I'm don't. i not crazy about uh, if this becomes a perforation type thing. I'm hoping that these are really... Oh, wow. Oh, shoot. Got all kinds of... <laughs> oh, well, I think I've got some teams hiding in this blue folder but anyway you first of course get as replay does in their sports they give you a little booklet with some biographies i'd say or just a little bit of description of how the aba season goes there's actually a section here it's talking about uncollated player cards for the 75 76 aba yearbook 
fine player Bob Nedelicki, move him to Indiana, find Barry Parkhill in San Diego, move him to St. Louis, and find William Franklin and move him to San Antonio. It says, due to the printing cutting process of our yearbook, cards, some collating of cards, which appear at the back of some team's card stacks is necessary. Here is a list of these players and the team stacks in which they appear. So this is very quite interesting. So it, I know that they do roughly, if available, up to 13 players per team in this um, their replay seasons. I mean, in today's modern day game, I bet you they might even do more. I'm not certain. I just wanted to go for the 75-76 ABA. The ABA ball is here. It is fantastic when you see something like that, that they're really trying to make it true to how the NBA was back in the 70s. And of course, there's some guy named Dr. J right there floating with the ball. We got some standings right there, and there they are. There's all uh, the teams that played games. San Diego and Utah, they played 11 and 16 games respectively. And um, Denver beat out New York by five games, but New York ended up winning the championship four games to two. Dr. J just finished his ABA portion of his career and was all everything. He was incredible. If you ever have a chance to look at a video, take a look at game one. There's a partial uh, second half at least of game one of um, New York and Denver in the NBA Finals, and it goes down to the wire. And I'm not going to say anything more. You just got to watch it. It's incredible. I've just never seen a game that finishes. And there's they cut out a, a couple little things, too, that in the final minute it kind of ruins a little bit of it, but it does have the final play, and it's just an amazing game. It pre pretty much it was just one of the best games of the series. So anyhow... It has a nice introduction, a nice description. It's got team stats. This is the stuff I, I, I love when they give you a little bit. I know a lot of this stuff, but it's nice. I'm not going to have to go to basketball reference to find out who scored the most points per game, who gave up the most points, team field goal percentages, opponents, re even op offensive rebounds per game, turnovers per game. I mean, it's, just, it's got a, li a little bit of everything, home and road records. Denver's obviously tearing up the league at 122 points a game. That Larry Brown team, I most people feel that they were probably the better team in that finals, but Dr. J, just he's Dr. J, 29.3 points. Got all the greats, Matt Calvin, Ron Boone, George Gervin. If you don't know these players, it's certainly worth looking up. Read a book titled Loose Balls. The History of the ABA by Terry Pluto. It's one of the best around. It'll get you squared around and up to speed on some of this stuff. And uh, these guys were great. Everyone, almost every one of these people in the leaders was in the NBA the following year because the there there was what they call a merger, but basically it was just a massacre. They took over four teams and made them pay four million bucks, and uh, it wasn't pretty. And all the rest of players that were on just teams that had uh, had to fold, including the Kentucky Colonels, which is a sad story. Um, their players just went into the draft, and Artis Gilmore got picked up by the Chicago Bulls, and Moses Malone, uh, and you know of the Spirits, and Maurice Lucas of the Colonels. They all got drafted by the NBA teams, and it made for a great 76-77 NBA season. But I kind of miss the fact that there's not two leagues like this today. It's really kind of an interesting thing. So you also got rebound leaders, Artis Gilmore, fifteen point five. Don Boozy led the league in assists and steals. The Whopper, Billy Paltz. Doesn't look like a shot blocker, but that man can block shots. 3.0 blocks a game. I'm a huge fan of the block shot, so that is fantastic. And they got nice little images of the Doc and David Thompson, the league's rookie of the year. Oh, they've got an, a 75-76. You see this? ABA pregame rare play chart. It's optional. Before starting the game, roll the red and white dice and read the replay style. The dice is 11 through 65. Begin the game normally. If the dice rolls 66, roll the dice again and consult 
the below chart. Interesting. So I'm going to save some of this information for my first gameplay, but you can take a look in this stuff. It's like, talks about the arena lighting, the 10 cent beer promotion that backfires. <laughs> this is fantastically creative. I'm really liking this. Shot clocks are not working properly. So there's all kinds of things. This is like a history maker basketball game almost. And I haven't even played that game, but that's the type of stuff they throw in there to give you the feel of what's going on around the league. Really interesting. Now let's see, do they talk about the teams? That's what I want to know. They got a little paragraph talking about every one of the teams. The um, interesting story, of course, will be the Baltimore Claws over here. And the former Memphis Sounds franchise moved to Baltimore for the 76th season, played three exhibition games, but couldn't meet the financial obligations and folded just a few days before the regular season started. Had they started the season, the roster would have looked like this. And it would have had... Well, it says George Carter, Mel Daniels, Scott English, Stu Johnson, Joe Hamilton... I was hoping to see that they would have had Dan Issel, because Issel was on the Baltimore Claws. He had been traded to the Claws. And then when he found out they couldn't uh, function financially, Issel became a Denver Nugget for the first time, because he was on the 75 champion Colonel. So it's, I'm surprised that um, Dan Issel's not on the clause. So it almost looks like you probably take some players and make your own clause team if you really wanted to. And I'd throw Dan Issel on the clause probably. That would make Denver a lot worse of a team. But you could always start Marvin Webster at center. But anyway, something to think about. Just the mere fact that they've got San Diego. They've got Utah. They've got those players on this in this package here is just tremendous. And, of course, they kind of do another thing, how to, how to scout the players, how you can tell, and this is what I've got to learn, how you can tell which players uh, are good, which players are bad if you don't know much about them. I know mostly what these players can and can't do, especially Dr. J. Who doesn't? Dr. J can do most everything at his position. And he even shot three-pointers at a reasonably good rate in the 30s in 1976 and that's another thing i'm going to say if anyone says that these old-timey players could not shoot the three in the 1970s in the aba in the 80s in the nba it's truly a misnomer these guys were talented they did not practice three point it was not part of the offense of the aba to shoot a whole bunch of three pointers like they do now these guys were just as these guys would have just been fantastic from three-point land I mean, I can use the case of Larry Bird all I want. During the 80s, he had multiple years where he hit 39, 40, 43%, and it wasn't even a fixture of the offense. Larry Bird could outshoot every one of these guys. I mean, he'd be right in line with Steph Curry as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, that's me just getting on a soapbox, and I'll drop right back off. Uh, the three-point shot was utilized in 76, but once again, Larry Brown didn't use it with his nuggets. Um, it just wasn't, wasn't a big thing for them. So anyway... What a fascinating thing. That's why I picked it. I just wanted to I wanted to relive the 76 season. I have this season in PTG basketball actually and I played it and this is a it was a time in PTG basketball where the um, the cards were they they had changed the formula a little bit. The realism wasn't as strong. I, I had a couple odd results, had a excess of fouls. I had to you know, the number of plays per quarter had been reduced and I don't think I reduced them, so this will be a whole different story. This game is fully immersed. The uh, technology, the the way to rate players in replay here is really well done. So we'll definitely see it. And I'm going to read up on a card like this, and I'll see Moses Malone, what kind of defense did they give him, what kind of offense. They did keep track of steals and blocks and turnovers and everything they have today in the 76 season. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Oh, there's always the quick replay chart. I always hear about that. If you want to say play Denver's season and you want to play full games of Denver, but you don't want to play everybody else. You can do these individual dice roll things, I believe, and um, quick play some games. So the records will probably be somewhat similar to how they actually did, but you don't have to play the games fully and spend two hours <laughs> trying to play out 
over uh, I think there's over 300 games if you play the whole season here with just the seven teams well maybe it's all teams I can't remember if I play I replayed a season I'd, I'd love to have Utah and San Diego play all all 84 games but but anyway that's what you get with the 75 76 book let's take a look at the cards real quickly no oh, there's three teams the others fell out. There they are. So what do we got? We got the Kentucky, Kentucky Colonels. Each buddy, each each team has its own team card. It looks like here. So forty-six and thirty-eight. I love the seventy-six Colonels because they acquired Maurice Lucas. So look at these cards. See, they're not. Ooh, they got a nice team stats card on the back per per minute played. It looks like. Oh, per 40 minute stats. So that's kind of cool. That's the high end in which most players played probably during that year. So you can see who played the most minutes. That's really a nice thing. And the cards are not glossy. And that's fine with me. This feels like a 100 card card stock. You know, I've got to take a look and see. I've got some cards real close by. See how this compares to, say, um, 110 pound card stock at um, a FedEx Kinko's or whatever. All right, you can see by, based on the size, this is basically the a t card, the slight, this is CB2K. This is slightly smaller than a hoops card, but you can see that these cards, kind of like Joe Bryan's bank shot, are about this size. Uh, these are a little wide. There's a lot of wasted space here, as you can see, but you can see the card stock. Got a little floppiness to this. I think they're about the same, but a really nice quality card. I don't need gloss on my cards, per se. I know that that might, you know, if you have dirty hands, they're going to get a little bit worn, but you know what? If you're not playing your games, then you know you got other problems to think about. You got to play the cards, get a little bit dirty. That's not gonna bother me. I keep my hands pretty darn clean. However, and there's the A train, Artist Gilmore. See, this will be easy to, easier to play. There shouldn't be too much gloss when I do a game and I have my my spotlight on just to add a little more brightness to it. Pretty cool. So the A-Train's got a 20 on the defensive board. That must be pretty darn good since he led the league in rebounding. You got the lifer, Louis Dampier, played every single season the ABA had. Maurice Lucas in his second season. One heck of a ball player. He was tired of playing with um, Marvin Barnes in St. Louis. St. Louis said, you know, well, let's see. We got we got the high price Marvin. We got a steady Maurice Lucas. Let's just trade Lucas. I don't know if that was the greatest trade in the world for them, but the league folded anyway. Bird Averett, one of the best names. Bird. Jan Van, always known for his defensive ability and fast break. So I want to know, is that a good fast break? You can see he's a five on offense, just doesn't get the ball too often. He does not like to shoot. Johnny Newman, one of those bonus baby players. Really... Uh, Never met his expectations in the NBA. He was heralded. He was 40 points a game in college and couldn't do much. Just Jim McDaniels did about the same thing. Jim did not play very well once he left the ABA for the NBA. A little Miss Malign on contracts. Jimmy Dan Connor. Got to have him and Jimmy. Got to have at least two Jimmys on a team, right? So then we got Indiana. Slick Leonard. Bobby Slick Leonard. One heck of a team. They had le lost uh, George McGinnis due to a contract. They just couldn't afford him. And Bobby knew that was going to be the case. He went over to Philadelphia. We got Denver, the best team in the league record-wise. And they just had Ralph Simpson, who was basically a, a little less physical version of David Thompson. This guy could play. One of these guys that didn't, didn't show much in the NBA. They were kind of past their prime. And there's DT, Skywalker, David Thompson. Dan the Man Issel. Claus had him. Claus folded. Nuggets win that battle. Bobby Jones, known as the best defensive player around. I don't know exactly what causes him to be a great defender. I think that's because there's a lot of ones on defense. I think that creates a lot of the defensive ability. Stopping shots from being made. Chucky Williams. Gus Gerard. He's got a one. That means he's going to get the ball quite a bit when he's in the game. Byron Beck, another ABA lifer. Fantastic shooter. 
Not known for his defense, but those Denver Rockets teams. This is the first year they were the Nuggets, I believe. Those Rockets teams were quite incredible. Monty Tao, all five, seven of him. Marvin, the human eraser, Webster. Roger Brown. This is not the Roger Brown. This is the tall, geekier Roger Brown and Jim Bradley. I don't think... Was Roger Brown on one of these teams? Let's take a look. Got some more teams over here. I can't remember if Roger Brown ended up. Where did he end up? Was he on... I have no idea where Roger Brown is. He wasn't on Indiana, was he? I don't think so. There's Boozy and Billy Knight. Boozy. What's his defense? One, two, one, two. And I think the four column has all those steals that he gets. He led the league in steals and assists. So there's a couple auto assists right there. As little as I know about the game, I can, I've can. i just got instincts for that kind of thing. Lynn Elmore, Billy Keller. Last season in pro ball. This was one of his best scoring years. Someone had to make up for the loss of McGinnis. And, of course, I said Billy Knight. Billy Knight averaged about 27, I believe. 28-1. Stats on cards. Always a good thing. Mike Flynn. Charles Jordan. Travis. Machine Gun. Grant. Kentucky to Indiana. See, that's multiple teams. Dan Roundfield. Ed Manning. Ed Manning, he had a son. His name's Danny Manning. Everybody knows who Danny is. No one knows who Ed is. Ed played for the Blazers as well in the NBA. Wow. I had to do a little research on my Roger Brown question. Roger Brown retired in 75 with the Pacers. I did not even know that. <laughs> I thought he'd appeared in a couple games in 76, but I'm looking at one of my encyclopedias, and there's no Roger Brown, and that's okay. He was toward the end of his career. I have him in 75 hoops, and a couple other seasons in PTG as well when he's a much better player. I created the 68-69 ABA season, a fast break. If you want to go to tabletop basketball board games and fight it, you can play fast break and run. Roger Brown, the more scoring all-star Roger Brown back then. But anyway, thought he was in 76, but I, I was mistaken. Caldwell Jones, this is the spirits of St. Louis. Marvin, bad news, Barnes with Caldwell Jones on the front line. That'll be solid. Freddie Lewis, this team won 35 games. So, you know, Marvin Barnes is in for one game, out for one game. Probably scores, you know, 37 points in one game. Uh, misses the plane, misses the next game, you know, that type of thing. I think he played in like 60, 69 games or something like that of 84. Don Chaney, known for his defense. This is just a partial year, though. I don't think he played too much. He played in the 48 game. Some guy named Moses Malone, he's got a one. That's that's a second year Moses Malone. He missed uh, had a bad foot, missed half the year. Steve Green, Mike Bark and shoot. Mike D'Antoni, he's known for something else. I don't exactly know. Maybe it's a coaching. Coaching those high scoring Suns teams and Knicks even. Don Adams, defensive specialist, came over from the NBA. You got the San Antonio Spurs, and you gotta look at the late the Captain Late, he's not, he's still around. Captain Late, James Silas. Now that guy could could score. He was not a three-point threat. He was just a penetration guy. And even though this team had Billy Paltz, had Larry Keenan who could score 20, had Gervin who could score 25, the man that got the ball at the end of games was Captain Late, James Silas. This is a great team. A young Mark Oberding, that guy couldn't have been more than 20 years old. Is that the ages? Is that the age up there? Shows he's 19 years old. That could be true. And that's 25-year-old Mike Gale. George Carl, 24 years old. Tom Owens. I never have enough Tom Owens type of guys. Good backups, occasional starters. And Stu Johnson, 32 years old, on the Spurs. Don't remember him on the Spurs too often. Ken Smith. Let's take a look at a couple of the folded teams. You got the San Diego Sales. They changed the name from Conquistadors, as I said earlier. Robish, Oberding. See, once again, there's an overlap there because this team folded after 11 games. The players just dispersed. So you got Robish, Oberding. Caldwell Jones started the year there. Bo Lamar and Pete McFarland. Not a great player. But anyway, you got a lot. Patrick, 
McFarland, sorry. Not good enough for me to remember his name. Bobby Warren, Bo Lamar. This is fantastic. I do love the quality of these cards. There's just the slightest amount of gloss in this. Very light. But not enough to uh, harm anything. Oh, I see. There was the collating. The Harry Rogers and the Barry Park Hills. They wanted to... Either they wanted the stacks to all remain the same, but these guys belong in St. Louis. We can easily make that adjustment right there. So that's kind of cool. But I don't know. Did Park Hill... I wonder if these guys... Did they actually pay, play? It doesn't appear that they played for them. Moving on to... Utah Stars. They used to have Moses Malone. They drafted Moses. But they still had Ron Boone, Randy Denton. I think Booney averaged like 20, 24, 25 points per game. Oh, 26-2 in his limited stint here in Utah. He ended up, where'd he end up? St. Louis? Steve Green, John Roche, three-point specialist. Let's see if you got any. I thought he hit some threes maybe. There's a three-point attempt maybe. I'm not sure. I've got to learn this game a little bit. Goo Kennedy, one of the best names. Joe Hamilton. Donald Washington. I always like Dwayne Dillard. It reminded me of Damian Lillard. But he did not play much at all. Neither did Kenneth Gardner. We're down to the 15 and 68 Virginia Squires. Patty Taylor. Another defensive specialist. Good passer, too. You can see a couple of assist opportunities there. Mike Jackson. Luther. Tiki Burden. That guy can score. 19-9. His only good professional season. And we got a Mike Green. Mac Calvin. Marv Roberts. Willie Wise, one of the ABA's greats. Did not translate to the NBA due to knee injuries. Dave Torzik, one year later on the championship Portland Trailblazers. Gerald Govan, a lifer in the ABA. I think he played all of maybe the first season of the ABA. So there's some good players in here. Finally, the New York Nets. Seven. Second place under Kevin Lockery. You got the doc. Let's take a look at the doc, even though we saw him earlier. Steals the ball quite a bit right there. Defense looks pretty good. They need it. The, the Nets, this team, if you look through this roster, they don't look like a championship team outside of the doctor. Rich Jones shot in the 30s from the field. Super John Williamson could get hot, but he was not necessarily a lockdown defender. Kim Hughes is a rookie. It's kind of one-dimensional, but at least he was there. He missed the final game or two with some injuries in the championship. Al Skinner was an underrated guard. Ted McLean was kind of an Al Skinner, very good defensively, not a great shooter. Tim Bassett, a really a not a, a non-shooter, good rebounder and defender. Brian Taylor was very underrated. This guy was very valuable. May have put them over the top. Um, great defensive player, at least got a lot of steals, a three-point threat. Jim Akins had to come in in that final game and win that last championship of the ABA. But you can see Utah Stars, Virginia Squires, New York Nets, three teams for Jim Akins. Jumbo or Jimbo, Jim Akins. Bill Melchione was, by the end of the year, he was an assistant coach after being an all-star with the Nets in the early 70s. Claude Terry, a good shooter. I know he was a good shooter and uh, looks like he played small forward, power forward, shooting guard. So, And George Bucci, Filled a hole on the bench. 20, 33 games, 7 minutes a game. And there's Neto. Neto, uh, they want him in Indiana. I'll throw him over in Indiana land. He never played with the Nets. So, there you have it. Bottom of the box right there. Replay basketball. I will be having future games with this. I got a couple other projects on the slate, but this looks like it's going to be a great game. I got the season I wanted. The game parts are in fantastic shape. I mean, once again, you can't go wrong with a game box that looks like that. That is just a tremendous looking game. And I've heard tons of great reviews from other people, other players, not just YouTube videos, but people have been recommending this game to me for a couple of uh, probably a couple of years now. So it's time to do it. 
I think it's uh, time to get out the replay and see how this game works. Can't wait to play some ABA basketball from 1976. So that'll do it for this episode of Rod's Tabletop Hoops. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Have a good one, everyone.